So do you need a rooted Android device for a penetration test project, but you don't want to risk going out and buying one with the potential of bricking it? Well, today I'm going to show you my method on how to virtualize Android devices. Hi and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you don't miss any future video. So if you're a penetration tester or you just want to play around with virtualized Android devices, then this video is for you. Up until I worked out this method, I would use an array of Android devices all running different versions and I'd have to physically use them in my hands a lot of the time rather than just staying all on the computer. This method has really simplified a lot of my workflow and it's just made things a lot easier for me. So overall this process is quite simple to follow but there are a few caveats here and there which I will cover in this tutorial. Overall this tutorial will go over 1. Downloading and installing the virtualized environment and setting up your first Android machine. 2. How to install Google App Services. 3. SSH into your device as root. 4. Deploying custom APKs. and 5. Proxying your app traffic through HTTP and HTTPS. So we have a lot to cover, so I'll keep it quick from here on. Go to genymotion.com slash download and download the version with VirtualBox. So the second one here. Download and proceed to install it just as any other file. Once installed, you'll have the following three icons on your desktop. Be sure to run Genymotion. And this will be your initial user interface where all your devices are listed here. So obviously you won't have any devices when you open this for the first time, so click the plus icon to create your first device and go to custom phone or tablet. You can give it a name and select its screen resolution. Android version, I prefer to use nine as that seems to be the most stable. You can set the custom process and memory size and be sure to set the network mode to bridged with your primary interface. This will allow us to SSH into the machine afterwards as it's not sharing the same IP address as your host. And click install. This will take a few moments to create the Android device. And when complete, you'll get this little pop-up here. So feel free to hit that start button. <laughs> Again, this will take a few moments to start up, especially if it's your first time starting this virtual device. And that completes step one. We now have our Android device. You may notice that the button for the app drawer isn't there. You can simply access this by clicking and sliding up. Now we're ready for step two, installing Google App Services. This is important so you can access any of the Google apps as well as Google Play. And we can install this very simply by going to this side menu here and installing OpenG apps, accept the license agreement, and this will just take a moment to flash. It will also open a website, which we don't need, so feel free to close that once that opens and once it's finished flashing we will simply need to restart the device. So the device will again proceed to reboot and once it's booted up simply swipe up and go to Play Store. Now you'll need to sign in with your personal account so feel free to do that now. I'd advise not backing up the device because we want this to be quite disposable. And now we're in Google Play and typically your device will crash around this point and that's fine. You will just need to restart it yourself manually. If your device is not starting up and it's eternally just starting virtual device, go ahead and open Oracle VM box and then just reboot the virtual machine in VMware and just start it again manually. Okay, and now Google Apps is installed. We can now proceed to step three, which is installing SSH server. Simply swipe up again and click on Play Store if you're having network connectivity issues, just be sure to turn on Wi-Fi and that should fix the issue. Go back into Play Store and type in SSH server and be sure to download the first one, which is the one for free. Click install. While that's installing, we need to give SSH root permission. So swipe up to your app drawer and go to the super user app and we'll need to change to just one setting. Click on the hamburger menu and go to settings and go to multi-user policy. Be sure to click, click all users and that should be all you need to do. Go ahead and click the home button again. Okay, now SSH server is installed, we can get, proceed to S, try to SSH into our device. Give it all the standard permissions 
and we'll need to create a user. So click the little user icon. And create a user. Go back to the home tab and click start and you'll see it's listening on a lot of IP addresses. Simply just find out the same IP address that your host subnet is on, which is for me the first one, and just use a SSH client like Putty to SSH into that device. And be sure to specify port 2222. So we log in as the user we created and we've logged in as Jace Pass. Now to get into root, we need to just SU root and we'll get a little pop-up here. Just click remember this choice forever and click allow. Now if we do ID, we can see that we're running as root. And now that brings us to step four, installing custom APKs. Up until now, we've just used everything on the device and on the app store, but if you have a custom APK you want to deploy into your virtualized Android machine, you need to install a compatibility framework first. The link in the description will include the link to this Git page, which will have the Guinea Motion ARM translation for all Android versions from 4.3 to 8. While this only goes up to version 8, version 8 will still work on Android 9 and 10. So go ahead and download that zip file, and once it's downloaded, all we need to do is drag and drop it into our virtual machine. It will ask you permission to flash the ROM and just click OK. It will proceed to flash and then restart the device. And when our device has rebooted for the final time, we can install an APK file simply by dragging it from Windows Explorer into the virtual machine. And straight away, our APK has installed and automatically launched for us. So this is just a test application that I use, so feel free to install anything that you need. And you can see it in the app drawer here as gone mad. Next, you might want to set up a proxy so you can intercept all HTTP and HTTPS traffic coming from both the web browser and any application files. You can do this in this tutorial that I've just got linked right here, as I've already covered it in depth. Congratulations, you now have a rooted Android device to work on, which is completely virtualized. The beauty of this is that this device is disposable, you can back it up, you can share it, you can destroy it, anything you want really. And it's just so much easier to maintain. If you'd like more mobile penetration testing content, be sure to leave a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button. Not only does it help me out, but it helps people like you find content like this. Anyway, I've been Jason from Jason's Egg. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.